hello, hello. What's up, everybody? Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Chris Gillibo. This is April 23rd, day 14 of the series, uh, which is all about finding opportunity in a time of uncertainty, exploring this uncertain world, trying to figure out what we can do uh, to build security for ourselves um, so that the next time something unpredictable comes along, perhaps not quite like this, but uh, whatever comes along in, in the world or in our lives um, that we are just kind of better taken care of. Um, so I talk about financial security a lot. Um, obviously, money is not the end goal. Money is a tool. It's a resource. Um, but if you're really stressed out about money, um, it's kind of hard to think about a lot of other stuff. Um, so just been coming on every day and sharing some different stories, examples, short daily lesson, um, but mostly a conversation. Uh, so it's a little bit of me teaching, um, but it's also just a lot of people who are trying to figure stuff out, myself included, um, and just learning from each other, um, finding ways to, as I said, build security, financial freedom, security, independence, all of that good stuff. Um, so I hope you've been well since we talked yesterday. I see a lot of our regulars here. Feel free to say, hey, hey. Um, we also got some new people, which is great. Um, there's a whole other group that's watching like after our stream, which is kind of fun because I hear from them later. Um, but if you're watching live, you can always participate in the comments. If you're watching later, Try to keep stuff, uh, I try to keep stuff timeless and, and relevant for the most part um, so that uh, you can always learn something um, and hopefully uh, be encouraged as well. Uh, whether you're watching now or later, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button uh, down there. That would be super awesome. Um, and uh, you can also subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications. Um, all these things kind of help YouTube and the mysterious algorithm, uh, which I still don't really understand uh, or care a whole lot about, um, but I do think it's a good thing. So thank you for doing that. Um, so every day we got a question of the day, um, but first I want to try something different. Um, we're going to try this. Everything is a real-time experiment here, um, as our long-term, long-time viewers of 14 days probably notice. Um, but let me see if this will work. So I take, um, here we go. Let's see here. Great. Yeah, so I've been taking audio questions uh, on the podcast uh, for most of, of this year. We do it two or three days a week. And um, I wanted to start using some of them here as well. And I'll show you a process if you have a question you want to send in. Um, but let's see if this works. This is the first one we have here from um, Nick. Hey, Chris. This is Nick from St. Louis. Uh, I recently found your show on Spotify. I have an idea to go door to door buying unused gift cards and then reselling them. At first, I was thinking of making this as a school fundraiser for my son. But now I'm thinking that it could be more. What do you think? Am I missing something obvious? Uh, thanks, and keep up the great work. Um, awesome. Cool. So thank you, Nick. So that question is actually coming up on the podcast. Um, my, my short answer for now, because we're talking about reselling again today, uh, my short answer to Nick is, uh, you know, on the one hand, that's very, uh, that is very that is interesting. Uh, everybody has unused gift, gift cards. Well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people have unused gift cards. Um, I always have mixed feelings about giving and receiving gift cards because I just know for myself, I often end up with a bunch of, bunch of them in my drawer and I forget about them for a year or two years and they're expired or I just, I just never use them. So I do think if you, you know, went door to door, either, you know, physically going door to door, uh, or that may not be possible now, depending on where you live, but you know, in your local area online or something, you could probably find some people to sell you gift cards at a discount. Uh, the question is just where are you going to sell those gift cards? Because um, you obviously need a marketplace for both buying and selling. So went into that a bit more um, in the episode, but just wanted to kind of test that out and see if it works. Um, if you have a question that you would like to see answered, um, you know, in this fashion or on the podcast, um, just come to sidehustleschool.com slash questions, um, and you can conveniently there leave a question. Um, so speaking of questions, I'm going to be a question, question of the day in a moment. Just want to say hi to some folks. Good to see you all here. Yeah, so many people who are watching every day, which I, th I think is so cool. Thank you. Thank you for helping me to, to kind of build this, uh, you know, build this together. I, I always go back at the end and read all the comments and such. Um, so if I'm not able to respond, you know, in real time, I do always read things later and it kind of informs what I do next. So thank you to Kurt, Caitlin, Doodle Reads, Jeremy, Mofolk, Dean, Nikki, uh, Cindy, everybody else who's been watching, and also our new folks um, as well. Um, so I see a couple of comments and questions, which I'll come back to at some point. Also, our, our, our folks from India, we always have a number of people from Mumbai and Bangalore and Hyderabad. Um, awesome to see you guys here. I hope you're doing okay over there. I've been reading about the, the situation in India. 
um, and the situation in New York and the situation everywhere. So yeah, all kinds of stuff out there. Um, but I'm glad we have the chance to kind of um, come here together. So question of the day, I um, would love to hear from you. How do you stop procrastinating? Or maybe just how do you deal with procrastination? Because um, I don't know if you're like me, you never really stop. Like it's, uh, it's kind of a constant issue or something to just be aware of. Um, I try to do work that I'm mostly motivated to do. Um, that's probably one of my main strategies, but I'll talk about a couple others here in a moment. Would just love to know from you, how do you stop procrastinating when there is something that you are, you know, just really putting off that you actually need to do, which I think is key as well. Like a lot of stuff we don't actually need to do and it just ends up taking up this, you know, psychic space and draining our energy, uh, you know, for no good reason. But when it is something that you actually have to do, uh, what do you do? Like, what is your tip or strategy? I would love to know, uh, post it there in the comments and, um, we'll review some of those and I'll, I'll share a little bit more about my answer as well. Um, while you're doing that, uh, for everybody who is new, um, I have a new book out 14 days old now. Um, well, I guess it's 15 days old, uh, 15 days. It's called the money tree. It's a story about finding the fortune in your own backyard. So this series is loosely based on that. Um, I use it kind of as a jumping off point sometimes. Um, so it helps if you're familiar with it. Um, it's, you know, that book is available at all online retailers. There's an audio version. Um, there is a Kindle, another ebook version. Um, but you don't have to buy that or anything else really. Like I'm happy for people to, um, uh, to share the book. I'm happy to, um, we got this new thing we're doing called a money tree book registry. I uh, hear with Nikki, who's on the chat, um, still in beta, but we're continuing to roll it out uh, at moneytreebook.com, uh, connecting people who would like to be book donors with those in financial need. Um, and during that, this, during this time for that whole process, I'm, I'm, uh, not taking any royalties for the book, uh, either just cause I want to contribute as much as possible to this. Um, so, uh, if you're enjoying this, if you agree with the message, uh, please help me share it. Um, like I said, nothing is, nothing is for sale. Just trying to provide, um, uh, helpful resource. You can send people to moneytreebook.com, post something with the hashtag, uh, moneytreebook, or you can share this channel as well. So if you've done that already, I'm very grateful. Uh, for that. So I might talk about reviews at the end, uh, reviews of the book at the end of this as well. But let's see, procrastination. Um, what do people say about this? Um, and also, we had a challenge yesterday. So um, Dean has a question or comment on that. Um, yeah, the challenge was to, to try reselling something, which I'm going to continue to talk about here today. Uh, so Chris says, in terms of procrastination, the other Chris Allen, do it first thing in the morning. That's good. Um, Caitlin, turn off my Wi-Fi and write in whatever text program. If it's writing, that's good. Sometimes I find that the more simple, the better, like it, it, rather than using, I use Scrivener to write my books and some, I have some other software, but sometimes it's like, I just need to actually like open a text document, not even Microsoft Word, but like a text document just to get something done um, to close things off. Cindy says, I make myself do what I don't want to do first. Um, then I get to do the stuff I want to do. It's a reward. Yes, I do that too. Corrine says, uh, work around the edges of a project uh, and little by little, you'll have to reach the main entree. That's good. I think Corrine and maybe a couple other people were on this Zoom call. I did a Zoom call last night for about 200 people, uh, which was really fun because like everybody's on the screen and like most of the time I'm the one talking, but we were able to like bring in other people and do their questions and such. Um, so that was fun. Um, later today, in fact, about 30 minutes after this ends, uh, I'm going to do an Instagram live with Cassie Peckle, Cassie DePeckle. She is... Uh, she was the first woman to visit every country in the world, first woman and youngest woman uh, to visit every country in the world. Um, so she's been a friend for a while. So we're going to do a little Instagram live at, at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, lots of other comments about procrastination. Um, yes, yes, yes. I have a lifelong struggle. Well, mofo, you know, join the club because me too. But I try to, you know, like I said in the beginning, my, my, um, my number one tip or strategy for, for life and productivity and everything in general is to, is to love what you do and to find a way to look forward to your work. And if you're not looking forward to your work, then it's very difficult, uh, you know, to motivate yourself, especially if you have um, a personality like mine, which I realize not everyone does, but, you know, I have ADD and I can be a little bit compulsive. And so, you know, those, those things are, are not really strengths or weaknesses. They're just characteristics. And, you know, they have pros and cons. They have things that you can use you know, to your, to your advantage. So that's what I try to do is like, I work on stuff that I'm excited about. Um, and hopefully I find things that I'm excited about that also have a connection, you know, to what other people are interested in doing. But there, it is true as well, um, as some people have pointed out that sometimes you just have to do something, right? You have to like push through. So I deal with that a lot as well. And I, uh, some of these strategies that have been mentioned, I like to just do it first. 
Um, I reward myself, you know, or punish myself simultaneously. It's like a carrot and a stick, right? It's like, I don't get to do this other thing until, you know, I do that thing I have to do. I also, um, um, a year or two ago, I started making this thing called a dread list, my to dread list, which is, which is like a to do list, but it's a list of things that you're dreading. And on the to dread list, you know, first of all, I make sure that there's nothing on there that doesn't have to be there. Like if, if there is something that I'm not looking forward to or it's causing me some anxiety, uh, you know, the first question is, do I really have to do this? Um, so I think it's always good to like go through your calendar on a regular basis and be like, do I, do I need to do this thing? Like, did I, you know, you know, do I really have to do this or is it possible to just actually like take it off? Um, and that can produce, you know, psychic relief. But for those things that you have to do, those things that you dread, I've got this like dread list. And from time to time, I'm just like, okay, let me just try to tackle some stuff here because then I'll feel better, you know, in the long run. Um, so thank you all for the comments and the questions. Um, lots and lots of stuff there. Um, so for the comments on reselling, I'm going to try to come back to some of those. If not, like I said, I always read it afterwards and, and kind of informs what we do next. I wanted to talk more um, today about reselling. Um, the concept of retail arbitrage, which is, you know, buying something for one price um, and then selling it for uh, another. Uh, and by the way, feel free to continue to post comments in chat and I go back to it when I can. So yesterday uh, I talked about like some of the episodes that we've had on the podcast, um, people who have, you know, bought and resold all kinds of items, including autographed baseballs, hammocks, yoga mats, uh, sneakers, some high end sneakers that go for a thousand dollars or more sometimes. Uh, letter boards, photography gear, surfboards, uh, video games. These are all just, you know, examples, Vi vintage radios, home appliances, um, really everything is for sale. Um, and yesterday I went through and did this example of, of looking at webcams for sale, for example, uh, on eBay, because right now a lot of people are buying webcams and other stuff to assist with remote work. So there you can see like a ton of stuff that's been sold just in the past day. And one of the things that's helpful in doing that is to look at the completed listing price and then see if it's possible. In some cases, you can actually on the same platform, uh, you know, buy something and then resell it for a higher price. In other cases, it may be more, uh, it may be more beneficial or profitable to buy from one platform and sell somewhere else, either buying locally and then reselling online or buying online and then reselling locally. Um, so I'll talk about a couple, a couple of those marketplaces. Um, but today I wanted to just give you, to, to actually look at three of these examples in some detail, um, or at least some brief detail. And um, so we're going to talk about vintage radios, um, autographed baseballs, and uh, one other. So uh, with each of these stories, and always, um, if they come from the podcast, you can go and listen to the whole story, the case study of like, just how this person, you know, got the idea, how they made it happen, what happened in their life, and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, just in brief, this first story, this was a guy who works in IT and um, he really got into vintage radios just first as a, a hobby. He was at a flea market and I think he had been doing some, some other reselling before and he found a couple of different, um, you know, vintage radios for sale, you know, pretty cheaply. And, um, you know, he bought these radios, took them home, tinkered a bit, you know, and of course he gets better at it over time. Uh, learns to to you know be able to fix these radios um, pretty quickly, and like I said, it's something he enjoys as well. He feels like he's using his hands, um, where he's you know mostly doing all computer work during the day. So he he you know starts getting into this, going to more flea markets, looking for other vintage radios, buying and selling them, and ends up building a little uh, website around it. And now you know as you can see from the headline, he's doing an extra fifty thousand dollars a year from this business, and this is a side business. You know, it's just fifty thousand dollars a year for something that he does you know, at night. And he talks in the episode about how he's been able to, to optimize this and make it more efficient, how he can, uh, you know, spend a few hours a week on it without taking too much time away from his family. And of course, obviously, you know, that extra income is, um, you know, providing a lot of security in an uncertain time. Um, so I really like that guy's project. He also has uh, just some really beautiful visuals um, of it as well. And um, second one was, you know, this, it was actually a high school student who's doing this autographed baseball thing. He's a college student now in Maryland, and uh, at the time we featured him, you know, way back in the day, he earned, he had earned ten thousand dollars, you know, as a, as a student um, selling autographed baseballs. And one of the things he did that I thought was so interesting, kind of shows the creativity that you can get into with some of this stuff. It's not just like you know going to eBay buying something and then reselling it. For him, you know, he had a, he had a lot of you know extensive knowledge about 
uh, about baseball, about like all the players, all the teams. And he was really into like the farm league and everything and like people that are coming up in the minors. And so, um, you know, you, there might be something that you will kind of obsess about, like a topic that you're a, a geek or a nerd about. Um, and this was his thing. And so one of the things he did that actually worked really well was he would acquire um, the autographed baseballs of some minor league players that he thought had a lot of potential based on stats, based on his own, you know, observation and experience and such. Um, and so it was possible to, to buy those autographs, uh, you know, pretty cheaply uh, because these are just minor league players. And then, you know, if they got pulled up or, you know, to the majors later, then they, all of a sudden their, their autograph is worth more. Um, so I thought that was just a creative thing, especially for a high school student to figure out and, you know, to be able to, um, to do that well with. I'm not sure what he's um, or how he's doing these days, but uh, sometimes people do these projects for a while and they go on to something else and, and, um, and that's good too. Um, and the third example, that's not what I wanted to say. The third example, here it is. The third example is um, this mom who flips RVs, uh, which I also thought was pretty cool. This was, I don't know, about 100 days ago. So if you listen to the show, you might have heard it a few months ago. Um, episode 1130. So I thought this was pretty cool because I always think about like reselling as like small items because back when I did it, you know, a long time ago, I was reselling video games and Lego sets and bags of coffee, you know, stuff that was all, you know, pretty simple to like get in a box at my home and like keep in the closet or whatever, but you can't keep an RV in a closet. Uh, but still she's found a way to, you know, she, I think she first did it for herself, like wanted to join, you know, the RV life, uh, you know, as so many people have embraced in the past couple of years. And so she learned to fix up her RV and then I don't quite remember how the first one happened, but basically she realized that she had this, this skill. And so she's doing, you know, about one a month or one every other month or something. She's doing at least, you know, six to 10 of these a year. And um, obviously this is a lot of work, but she's making a profit of about $6,000 for each one, you know, for each RV that she purchases and kind of fixes up and such. Uh, she's earning about $6,000. Um, so to me, this was like, well, you can, you can uh, resell everything, basically. If you can learn to buy and sell re you know, RVs as, as massive as those are, as those are you can um, you know, do something for everything. So I was actually doing some research this morning just to kind of catch up on her. And um, on her blog, she's got a really detailed post um, answering this question of how much does it really cost you know, to renovate an RV. I made a short link for it there if you want to see the, the whole post, uh, aonc.co slash flip RV. Um, just lots of information about the process and, and um, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, a couple of quick tips um, before we go to the chat and um, just kind of break this down a little bit more. Um, this is what I mentioned yesterday, but in connection to the stories today, you know, choose items with a high selling price. Um, that radio guy, I believe the vintage radios are selling for a couple of hundred dollars each, uh, if I'm not mistaken, maybe even a little bit more. Um, like he, first of all, makes them work. And then also he kind of soups them up a little bit. And I think when we featured him, he was exploring this connection of like, you know, old and new essentially, and, and like connecting the vintage radios or enabling the vintage radios to have like a smart speaker, you know, connection with them. So he's, he's doing something pretty creative with it, but he's able to buy these radios, you know, for $25 or, or so each, uh, and then put the work into them and sell them for, you know, 10 times that amount. Um, obviously RVs are a pretty high selling price and, you know, the autographs is kind of a variable thing. Some of them may be high, some of them may be low, but the point is there's, there's a potential with all of these things for a good profit margin, which I think is really important. Um, and not just a good profit margin, but also a good selling price. Um, uh, because like I mentioned yesterday, you know, if you are reselling stuff for like three or $4, you know, you buy something for like two bucks, you resell it for $4, then technically you have doubled your money but you've only made $2. So you have to sell a lot of stuff like that to actually have a real you know, impact on your finances. Whereas if you're selling stuff for a lot more, then, then it's a lot easier. You can sell fewer items. Um, and you also wanna choose items with high demand uh, or at least not very low demand. I think the RV is a good example because you know, it's not like you can flip an RV every day. It's not like she can sell them that often, but she knows based on her experience that you know, once a month or one a month or one every other month, however often it, however often it is, you know, there is enough demand that she is able to find a buyer, you know, for that. Uh, so you don't want to be stuck with inventory. You don't want to be stuck with something that you just can't sell. Uh, you just can't sell because then not only are you stuck with the inventory, but also like you don't have strength in your, you know, positioning. You don't have strength in your pricing or, or any negotiation because, you know, nobody wants to buy it. Um, and then also just like, 
you know, the more detailed listing that you can provide, um, really the better, uh, in terms of if it's listing on eBay or any other platform, I think a lot of people shortcut that and they just write like a sentence or two. And, you know, if you include like a lot of photos and a lot of description, especially something for an RV, because obviously people are going to want to see that in person. So there needs to be like a, a story behind that. What is the story of this, you know, vehicle? What is the story of this radio? You know, what year did the radio come from? And, you know, do you have any background on where it was before? If, if not, you know, something about the nostalgia of the age of the radio, of, of that time of radios and, um, you know, the, the guy's personal story of why he repairs the radios, um, the student with the baseball, there's a lot you could do there. So I just think like um, the more detailed, the better usually. Uh, people who aren't going to buy it don't care, um, but people who are interested, they just kind of keep reading. And I've seen that over and over with like long copy, you know, sales pages, the same is true. Um, you know, a lot of people are not interested in, in everything, but then the people who are, are kind of hooked, you know, by that. So um, high selling price, uh, high demand, relatively speaking for both of those things, and then try to provide as much uh, information as possible. Um, okay. So I got a lot of questions yesterday after I did, um, by email and elsewhere on social and such about the whole reselling thing. Uh, I am curious what, what you all are doing. So feel free to let me know. Did you, did anybody do the challenge yesterday, by the way, maybe you've said this, but I just haven't actually been able to see it because I'm, I'm, you know, talking to you here. So the yesterday's challenge was to like, just sell some, like list something for sale somewhere. Okay. Um, and you know, in the book, the money tree, the, um, Jake, the main character has this challenge where he has to make a thousand dollars a week, a thousand dollars in a week. Um, and he's never done that before, you know, through reselling or through some other kind of side hustle. And at first it seems really intimidating, but the way he tackles that challenge is through this art of, of retail arbitrage, uh, of learning to buy one thing at one price and then sell it for a higher price. Um, so you don't have to make a thousand dollars yesterday. If you did, that's awesome. Let us know. But, um, uh, I am curious if anybody took up, uh, took us up on that challenge to sell something. Let us see here. Oh, Daryl mentions uh, shipping in Canada by Canada post is very expensive compared to USPS. Yes, that's true. I've heard that. Uh, so I'm going to have to choose what I buy size and weight. So in some ways, uh, that's a good constraint. Like in some ways it's annoying. You're like, oh, it's pretty expensive. Um, but in other ways it's like, well, this is my constraint, you know, so I can either choose items that, you know, are small and don't weigh a lot, uh, to lower that shipping cost, or I can choose items that, um, the shipping cost might be high, but because of what they are, it doesn't matter so much. Like for some items, people are happy to pay a shipping cost because of whatever it is that you're selling, you know? So I think it's, it's, it's like two paths there, but if you try to do, you know, the same thing that everybody else is doing, then you're right. You're going to run into that, that shipping issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, Laura said last night I found, I found myself having dreams about selling stuff. Um, now I remember why that's fun. Dean, glad you were on the zoom. That was fun. Somebody else asked about the zoom. Uh, yes, if you were part of that, that was a masterclass we did for everybody who pre-ordered the book. Uh, if you were part of that, we did record it. Um, so I think we're sending out an email about that, um, today. Doodle Reed says vehicles are a bit tricky. Um, it's hard to know if it's got engine problems. Um, yeah, you need to, you need someone who knows, uh, or you could land up with angry customers. Yes. Uh, so good point. I wouldn't recommend, uh, somebody who knows nothing about cars or vehicles, you know, to go out and to go into that market. Uh, that is something where the skill that you have, the knowledge you have, it really is important. Um, there are some things that it doesn't matter as much. Um, but for something like that, you know, then yes, it does. But that also shows why there's value in it. That also shows, you know, why somebody who does have that knowledge and is able to, you know, repair the car or whatever it is, um, can do well with this. So the same thing is true with computer equipment or anything technical like that. Um, Southwick says you're going to buy some books of the money tree and I will resell. That's great. Um, I don't know if I've told you guys before, but long ago I did this tour of, of India for the hundred dollars startup. And I went to, uh, I think 11 cities in India and that book has done really well there, which I'm, I'm fortunate uh, for because I get lots of emails from, from readers in India. And the, one of the high points of my author life was when I was, I think it was in Bangalore or somewhere I was, when I was walking down the street and I, this guy is like selling, you know, pirated copies of books. And my book was one of the ones that he was selling. It was like photocopied basically, which I was like, that's a lot of work, man, to like photocopy a 300 page book, you know, and put it together and assemble it. Um, but I was like, wow, now I've made it, you know, my, my book has been, has been pirated. 
and I was with my local publisher there. And of course they were really upset and they were like chasing the guy down and everything. I was like, no, this is cool. You know? So fun fact from my days of touring India. Uh, Rachel says not quite the challenge, but I listed my baked goods in a Facebook group and I got $40 in sale, $40 in sale. So I'm baking right now for a pickup later. That's awesome. That is very cool. Um, you know, $40 in sales. That's, that's awesome. Reminds me of the story of this, um, another college student. I did a, a story of a college student in California who baked enough cheesecake to pay for her college, um, which was like $30,000, you know, a year or something. That was amazing. But Rachel, you don't have to do that much. You start, start with the $40. Eric says, I bought a laptop and flipped it in an auction. WhatsApp group. That's cool. I have not heard about um, people doing that with WhatsApp before. That's fun. Laura says, clothing sells better if photo is on a person or a form rather than lying flat. Yep, good tip. Very good tip. That is totally true. And also just, I mean, with anything that is visual, so clothing is, of course, you know, in that, um, in that department, the, you, you want good, good photos, right? Like a lot of them are done with like really bad backgrounds, like, you know, dark, you, you know, you just want it to make sure that it's, it's really highlighted well. And also if there's any kind of flaw, um, just make sure you really point that out. And that, that actually builds trust. Like there's, there's like, oh, there's a slight little, you know, issue with this thing. Make sure, make sure it's really clear. Um, it doesn't necessarily discourage someone from buying it. It actually builds that, that trust and connection. Um, okay, so got a daily challenge for you, of course, and happy to respond to a few more comments and questions before I sign off for the day. Uh, I'll be doing that Instagram Live in about 30 minutes with Cassie DePeckel. So let's see, our daily challenge. What is the daily challenge? Okay. So yesterday was to resell some or to list something for sale. Okay. Whether it's baked goods or your laptop or maybe not the laptop you're using right now, but you know, something. Um, so there's lots of different online marketplaces. I talked about eBay yesterday. You know, we've already mentioned a few different ones and people have mentioned them in the chat. Uh, so my challenge today is, is just go and register at one that you haven't registered at before. Um, a couple of ideas for that. And here I was thinking mostly local it doesn't have to be local, but that's just kind of what I was thinking specifically um, in terms of, uh, Facebook marketplace. Uh, so just general marketplace options and then Facebook marketplace itself, uh, would be one. And it, obviously if you have a Facebook account, then you're already registered there, but just go and take a look. Um, offer up is, uh, an app that a lot of people have been using. I'm hearing some really good, good reports about that, uh, for buying and selling, uh, just kind of like a, a little bit more technological advanced, um, uh, uh, version of Craigslist, if, you, if you're familiar with that. Um, and then the, the Nextdoor app is also, you know, highly local focused, um, focused uh, specifically on your neighborhood and the people just, you know, in your immediate area. And a lot of stuff has been happening there. A lot of, a lot of conversations, uh, some controversial stuff as well. Um, but, um, you know, a lot of op opportunities to connect. So my, my challenge is go and register at one of these things and explore it a little bit and see, is there something that you could, you know, you could offer there. So if you didn't do the challenge yesterday of like listing something for sale, um, you know, can you do it today? And for those watching in India and elsewhere, uh, I'm pretty sure there are local networks there, you know, that do, that do the same things. So they might not be the same names, um, but you know, different parts of the world, um, you know, have, have similar kind of, kind of networks for, for buying and selling and connecting. So that is my challenge uh, for you. Uh, oh, Mandy says, I listed busted LED lights and they sold within 24 hours. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah, you never know. Um, you, you never know what, um, uh, what people will buy. A couple other tips. Oh, and Tim says, can we get more details about Eric's WhatsApp process? Yeah, Eric, let us know more about that. And if we don't, if we're not able to get to it today, then let's do it. Um, let's do it tomorrow. Uh, we're, tomorrow we have like a longer version of the Q and A. So every Friday I'm doing a couple of stories, a couple of examples, but the most of it is focused on Q and A. So I'd actually love to hear more about that too. That would be great. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. 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 Uh, well, so glad you guys are joining me. Let's see. I think I had one more thing I wanted to say if I can find it. Um, daily lesson. Oh, maybe it's with the challenge with the challenge. Um, I was really excited to see that, um, the money tree now has more than a hundred reviews, uh, mostly five star on Amazon, uh, which is super cool. Um, with this screenshot, it was 98, but now I think it's above a hundred. Uh, so I'm just really grateful if you have read the book, um, to just take a moment and go and leave a little rating and quick review, uh, on Amazon or Goodreads is also a great resource. Or if you're like, well, I'm in another place and I can't, you know, leave a review on amazon.com in Canada, there's amazon.ca. There are other options, um, but just the reviews help a lot with authors. Um, it actually shows kind of the publishing industry. It shows um, 
even the, alg the Amazon algorithm, it's like people actually like this book. Um, so thank you to those who've done that. If you have a quick moment, that would be awesome. Uh, but mostly, you are awesome. I hope you do something uh, for yourself. Um, I really want to see you know, more and more stories and hear more stories and see more changes that people are making. Um, I believe this is a time in which, in fact, we're already seeing you know, a lot of people making shifts, big shifts, small shifts in their life, um, just trying to think, okay, this situation in lots of ways sucks. Like, let's just call it like it is. It sucks in lots of ways, lots of negative effects, you know, and a lot of people are being harmed and, and impacted through it. But since we can't control a lot of that stuff, what is within our control? What can we do, you know, for ourselves, which will ultimately allow us to help other people more uh, as well. So uh, that's my encouragement for you today. I hope you uh, do something uh, for yourself. Look out for yourself and be sure to check up on somebody else as well. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, my name is Chris Gillibo. And I hope you'll come back again tomorrow. Feel free to share the channel. Feel free to, feel free to let your friends know, uh, subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. A good time will be had by all. Um, and have a wonderful day.